Even though Mount Diablo lies within an hour's drive of eight to nine million people, it's still a place where scientists are making discoveries. They're finding new species and developing a better understanding of how natural systems work. But life on the mountain doesn't exist in isolation. It's dependent on connections with the rest of the Diablo range. Mount Diablo is the head of the Diablo range. And the Diablo range goes from Highway 41 near Parkfield all the way up here to Contra Costa County. It's one big unit, not only geographically, but floristically. And there's a couple rare plant species that demonstrate this. One is the rock sanicle, the one that grows up on the Mary Bowerman Trail at the top of the mountain. That grows down in Henry Coe. Mount Diablo Facilia also grows down in Henry Coe and comes all the way up here. So these things are connected in a way. Keith has long been active with Save Mount Diablo, which has been working to protect land on and around the mountain since 1971. When the organization began its work, about 7,000 acres of land were protected. Today, 110,000 acres are protected. That's an area bigger than Point Reyes National Seashore or the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. And the organization has expanded its vision to include connections between Mount Diablo State Park, Henry W. Coe State Park, and other lands to the south that sustain the Diablo Range's wildlife and plants. The work involves protecting most of a 10-mile long corridor at Altamont Pass. One of their main pushes is to make sure that Mount Diablo does not get cut off from the rest of the Diablo Range it's through Altamont Pass. Seeds travel in many different ways, and if those animals that sometimes carry seeds from one place to another get cut off from the rest of the Diablo Range, then we're cutting ourselves from evolutionary potential and climate change resiliency. Climate change resiliency is really about land conservation and conserving land and enough land that you have the right elevations preserved and the right aspects and the right slopes for plants to move around. So if it gets hot, plants hopefully can move from one aspect to another or higher in elevation if they need to, or lower in some cases, down a cool canyon. So protection of Mount Diablo and the larger Diablo range are important from a climate change resiliency standpoint. Now, once again, it's time to make your own discoveries. You may not encounter surprises as dramatic as those that come after a fire, but Mount Diablo is always changing from season to season and year to year. The more you know, the more exciting a walk can be. You can't go wrong with any of the hikes we've suggested in the previous segments. The Mary Bowerman Loop, Perkins Canyon, North Peak Trail, Curry Point, and Back Canyon. But that's just the beginning of what Mount Diablo and its surrounding parks have to offer. Really, you can be on the mountain at any time of year and see something good. I mean, if you start off, say, New Year's, I'd go out towards Balancing Rock from Curry Point or up around Wall Point to look at the Manzanitas. And you can see them at that time of year in all their glory. So you could be out in January and hear the bees buzzing around and think, oh my gosh, it must be springtime, but it's January and it's like, wow, I'm in California, aren't I? <laughs> then, of course, March, springtime, you start to get the fritillaries blooming, and, and that's big time for botany on Mount Diablo. No brainer, you go anywhere on the mountain in April and you'll see all kinds of bulbs and lilies and, and wildflowers in the grasslands, in the woods, in the chaparral. Pick your spot, you'll be amazed. But then as summer draws on, then you have to find some more off the beaten trail or high elevation spots. Well, and that's when you go up to the Mary Bowerman Trail and you can still see wallflowers blooming up near the top of the mountain and the lupins start to bloom. The chaparral 
starts to bud with a chemise. And then you get into June and July and the tarweeds start to happen. And there's the hayfield tarweed, which is white, and then the Hearman's tarweed, which is yellow. And in some years that tarweed is all you can see in the grasslands for a mile. And it's got the sweetest smell. I think that's probably the time on the mountain that I like the most is when the grass is dry and you can smell the tar weeds and you can look out and see the contrast of the golden hills against the green oak trees. It's uh, just something about it just I really appreciate. And then into the fall you can start appreciating oaks and the acorns. Looking at different acorn caps, starting to identify oaks that way. During the fall, as the light shifts, we wait impatiently for the rains to start. Then you get late night sprinkles and green circles around the trees. When the chaparral current starts blooming, the rainy season and the wildflower season have begun. Mushrooms pop up. New wildflowers appear each week. The treasure hunt begins yet again. Thanks to Mount Diablo's endless cycles of fog, rain, and yes, even fire. We've touched on the rich botanical diversity that the Diablo Range has to offer, but some questions remain. Will these plants continue to thrive, or will this guide become a historical snapshot of what we've lost? In this time of climate change, there's a lot to learn. There's also a lot to do. If you've enjoyed this guide, Check out the hikes, restoration projects, and other activities at Save Mount Diablo and the California Native Plant Society. Get involved.